Whenever I travel, I always try to film in a way that matches the location, so I always end up taking a different kit with me. For this trip to the more countryside of Hokkaido, I thought it would be great to highlight the vast open winterscape with the widescreen look achievable with anamorphic lenses. For those unfamiliar with anamorphics, very basically what they do is squeeze more information horizontally onto your sensor or film plane, so when the image is stretched to be viewed correctly, you get a very nice widescreen look. Of course, you could take your 16x9 image and just crop the top and bottom to achieve a widescreen look like this, but as you can see with this comparison, the anamorphics will allow you to get more information, whereas cropping your image is going to be much more punched in than the de-squeezed anamorphic footage. The thing is, anamorphic filming is already pretty difficult as it is, often involving heavy and expensive rigs, and because I would be filming on my own in Hokkaido during the winter, I wanted something much more simple, so I was very particular about my gear choice. That's why I went with the GH5 for its built-in anamorphic de-squeeze and rugged body. As for the anamorphic part of the kit, I decided to go with the Moondog Labs anamorphic adapter. The choice of this adapter also meant that I could use it on a phone, which came in really handy on the ski lifts and other locations where it was difficult to bring even the GH5. Moondog Labs offers a few different lens options. The anamorphic adapter I used for all the footage in this video was the original with a 37mm rear thread. It offers a 1.33 times squeeze, so your 16x9 footage becomes 2.4 to 1 widescreen aspect after being stretched in post, or if you're using a mobile app like Filmic Pro, the de-squeeze can be done as you record. The fantastic thing about the Moondog Labs adapter is the standard 37mm rear thread. A lot of other anamorphics made for phones have a non-standard thread or custom mounts making it difficult to use on anything but the proprietary phone case. It is possible to use this adapter on larger sensor cameras, but as far as I've tested, you can't get as wide of an image on a full frame camera compared to the GH5. Throughout this video, on the GH5, I was using the Panasonic 14mm f2.5, which is about a 20mm equivalent on full frame. The same lens combination on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K has some vignetting around the corners, but trying to use any 28mm lens I have on full frame just didn't work out, and you need at least a 40-50mm to 50 millimeter to get a clear image. And regardless of your lens or camera choice, you won't be getting the classic oval bokeh, and in general the background blur can be a little bit messy, especially around the edges. These adapters are made for phones after all, and are most likely optimized for use with a taking lens set to infinity. With all that in mind, I think the performance of the 14mm Panasonic, which is pretty much set to infinity of focus for all but the closest subjects, was a great choice to use with the Moondog Labs adapter on the GH5. 28mm equivalents are also about what you would see as the main camera on a smartphone, so throughout this footage you do see that classic and dramatic anamorphic distortion. And I think one of the most impressive things about this setup is that it's still very difficult today to get extremely wide-angle footage with anamorphic lenses, even now that we see many new manufacturers of anamorphic lenses popping up each year. You might be able to go this wide with a 1.33x adapter, but there are not too many compact options like this, and you won't even come close to the angle of view if you're trying to adapt a 2x projection lens. The Moondog Labs anamorphic adapter gives your footage a really unique look without breaking the bank, and in general it's just a ton of fun to use. Since it's so small and light and easy to use, taking on a trip like this or using it for running gun style documentary, music video, any kind of footage that you want to take in an anamorphic style, this is a great way to do so. You can even get a clip-on adapter for the front of this lens, which allows for NDs, and once you have it set up, it makes it look like a tiny Lomo square front lens. Of course, these are two totally different levels of gear. 1.33 times squeeze is not going to give you the look of two times anamorphic, including the very well-loved Opal Bokeh. But with the Moondog Labs adapter, if I try hard enough, I can get my lenses to flare with a nice subtle warm look. Another cool thing about this adapter is that they allow you to maintain autofocus on cameras like the GH5. I'm not really sure if the accuracy remains the same. It's probably affected. And I would recommend using manual focus as much as possible for something like this, but it is an option. So after taking this trip to Hokkaido with the anamorphic lenses, I was really inspired to take a larger 2x anamorphic kit with me on my next trip, and so I'll have a follow-up video on how I did that. So get subscribed to see that. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to chat about anamorphic lenses, filming, film cameras, anything like that. I'm David, and thank you so much for watching.